The following was written by Robert Wright and published in Dodge City, the Cowboy Capital, in 1913. A game animal of the utmost practical value was the wild horse, which was hunted in a manner very different from that in which other game was hunted, and which was attended by peculiar difficulties and dangers. In the summer of 1878, Mr. J.T. Elliott of Dodge City, in company with I.M. Henderson and F.C. Foxworthy, started in pursuit of wild horses. An account of their experience, as related at the time, runs as follows. They struck a band of about 200 head of the finest wild horses they ever saw. After following them on horseback and afoot for nine days and nights, they finally succeeded in corralling 48 head. They were 36 hours without water and came near perishing for want of it. Finally, the herd struck the Arkansas River just at the time when they were ready to give up further pursuit, as they felt they could go no farther and must surely perish for want of water. New courage overtook them, however, and and they stuck to their little band until the river was reached. They are holding these horses at Lakin. Mr. Elliot was in Dodge a few days ago, purchasing supplies for another trip after wild horses. Wild horses were numerous on the plains. These horses were the progeny of abandoned horses by plainsmen, and they were harmful to range stock. The capture of the stallions was necessary so as to corral and capture the mare herds. The increase of the wild bands was made yearly by the escape of horses from the stock herds. The wild stallions could not be secured by a cowboy on horseback. A winter's campaign was necessary to accomplish the capture of the wild horses. The stallions were shot by getting in close range by the cowboy from time to time, and the mares were secured alive. A horse belonging to a cattleman by the name of E. Clements was being saddled with a cowman saddle made by R. E. Rice when it broke away from its owner and was not seen until two years afterwards when it was discovered with a drove of wild horses, the saddle still being in proper position on the back of the horse. The owner never recovered the animal. Robert Wright the ancestors of the modern horse originated in North America and spread to Eurasia by crossing the Bering Land Bridge. Back and forth migrations between North America and Eurasia continued until the land bridge flooded 10,000 to 11,000 years ago. Between 13,000 and 11,000 years ago, the prehistoric North American horses died out leaving Asia, Africa, and Europe with horses, but none in the Americas. The Spanish brought horses to the Americas with their colonization of Central and North America in the 1500s and early 1600s. Some of their horses escaped or were abandoned, and many more were captured in raids by Native Americans. Even more horses became available after the Pueblo Revolt of 1680, in which hundreds of horses were left behind by the Spanish. As the horse population grew in North America, so too did the population of wild horses. The breed of horse first brought by the Spanish was the Barb Horse, a smaller, sturdy horse bred to survive in the North African deserts. Mustang horses are the descendants of these wild barb horses, although over the years Mustangs have bred with other domestic breeds of horse, and so Mustangs are a mix of different breeds. Some herds of wild horses are closer to the original barb horse than others. Although these herds are referred to as wild horses, technically they are considered to be feral, as they came from a domesticated population. The American West was a perfect habitat for these wild horses, with few natural predators. The population of wild horses decreased the farther north they spread, as harsh winters made both feeding and breeding more difficult. 
It has been estimated that during the 19th century, two million wild horses roamed the area between the Rio Grande and the Arkansas River. Large numbers of wild horses meant competition with farmers and ranchers who were trying to grow fields of crops and use grassland to support livestock. Many people in the American West either tried to capture and tame these horses or simply killed them as they were considered to be a nuisance. The debate over what to do with wild horses is still going on today. In 1971, the Wild Free Roaming Horse and Burrow Act was passed, allowing wild horses and burrows to live in 303 herd areas, which totaled 47 million acres of public land. Over the years, this has decreased to 201 herd management areas on less than 30 5 million acres. The Bureau of Land Management estimates the current population of wild horses to be at 64,604. Sterilization is used by the Bureau to control the population.